Just now, the previous speakers highlighted the unbalance of devel development. Here, we would like to provide a solution which might be applied in your living community. I want to start my presentation with three quizzes. First, who can distinguish the wheat and the leek? You got the answer in mind? OK. Second, what's the difference between corn and the sugar cane? Any ideas now? The last one. What about tong and suan in Chinese? I heard a lot of complaints from the wife to the husband, saying that the husband can't really tell the difference between tong and suan, so that always buy the wrong ingredients for the wives. Now, I won't tell you the, real, uh, the true answers. I want you to find it out later from your neighbors, from your parents, from your partner, from a farmer, or from our garden. We have a little garden here on the roof of the Guanren International Community Office. It is only 150 square meters. However, we managed to harvest cones here, sunflowers, watermelon, and uh, rice in this summer. The Guanren Community Rooftop Garden was rebuilt in 2020, and uh, we engaged, we involved many residents from the community, and also local international schools, local residents, local designers, and also academy institutes. This is how it looks like after the rebuild. It looks much nicer, neater, and more colorful, isn't it? And uh, with the supervision of Guanren community and also the Bo Ai Social Work Service, a uh, garden committee and uh, advisory board are even set up. I was wondering why such a mini tiny garden requires a committee. It sounds uh, not understandable, but it turned out to be a very correct decision. Because in the volunteer team, we have ones to take care of the garden on a daily basis, and uh, we have one to take care of the finance function. We have one to organize the activities, and one for publicity and communication. It looks like a company. And uh, we always bear in mind why we do the garden in this way, because of the interaction. The interaction with nature, the interaction with the next generation, and also with the people we encounter. Now, let me bring you to our garden. In the garden, we have the family planting activities, four rounds, roughly, for one year. So the kids will come with their parents by digging, by sowing, to start their planting journey. So in roughly three months, the kids are encouraged to come to the garden, to the small buckets they adopted, to water them, take care of them, after school. So you see kids gathering after school in the garden, playing around. Isn't it much nicer than staying indoors and uh, having the handphone all the time? Some kids didn't like to eat vegetables. After coming to the garden, getting close to the green, he started to eat vegetables. Some kids are very dedicated to remove the weeds as quickly as possible. Even when the vegetable is ready to pick up, he really doesn't want to remove it and bring it home and cook. And there's a little girl who is in grade five. He has a, uh, she has attended twice of the activity. The last ending ceremony, he stood in front of adults and kids of other uh, families. She said, uh, after coming to the garden, I finally understand what ecosystem is. Isn't it amazing? And she uses brief but clear language to explain the process. So soon, we want to bring the kids to join our uh, charity um, activity, to extend their love, their care, and their patience to senior citizens of different families. 
from time to time, we join, we participate in the local uh, community uh, charity flea market. And also, we welcome resi uh, residents to pick up the vegetables. Of course, all the income goes to the charity account or goes back to the garden official account to ensure it's financially sustainable. We also open the courses for enzyme and compost for adults. And also we have the summer schools for kids. Soon we will guide the kids to make the fertilizer by using their urea. All the knowledge for sharing is free. I want to show you how we make the compost in the garden. We put the pulp into the soil, we bury them, and a few weeks later, they become humors. And uh, the dry grass is for losing the soil. The mushroom compost is for the nutrition. We just get some bags of the dry grass from the lawn, and we, got, we are going to reuse them. It's true that living in a city, we are well supported by a very good um, urban living system. We have good houses with air conditioners. We have free and uh, we have very good uh, transportation. We have clean water, clean air, and uh, clean food. These are the visible factors for our well-being. But how about the invisible factors? For example, the microbes, for example, the mental issues, for example, the social determinant. Being close to the nature is a way to get in touch to the microbes. Microbes is something coming from the nature together with us. They are invisible, but actually they are everywhere. Imagine that you ex expose yourself in a green garden, the breeze, the colors, the smell, the touchings, and also the taste are all the media for you to get in touch to the microbes. And also by eating, the microbes goes into your gut. But is that all? Because standing on the planet, it's more than just dealing with the nature. It's also about the relationship, the connections with others. So getting engaged in transforming and improving your living, living environment with someone who exactly living in the same area is a way to help us to move beyond the barriers of transition and to a greener economy and a sustainable, sustainable society.